Thanks for joining us on Newsnight. I am Ladi Akiri Doluale. We are taking another look at Nigeria's aviation sector today and the role it plays in economic development. Subsidiary issues such as national carrier viability, multiple route designation, airports infrastructure, amongst others, will also feature in the conversation. My guest is the Minister for Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika. Honorable Minister, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the most recent report I've read from uh, FAN right. about uh, the aviation industry talks about uh, significant increase in passenger traffic up until June 2019, which is when the report you know, stops. Uh, of course, they are expecting to produce the one for the latter half of 2019 where the figures are expected to even be higher. Um, to what would you attribute this, apart from the kind of things that government has been doing in terms of terminal construction and all the other physical things that have been going on at the nation's uh, air, air entries? Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, since you remove significant, significant part of <laughs> the causative factors, but uh, indeed and in truth, that um, it's occasioned by quite a number of factors. One, it's becoming easier to do business in Nigeria. Two, it's also becoming much easier when you have the capacity for people to move. The propensity to fly is also has increased tremendously in Nigeria. That also is another topic on its own, the economic activities, uh, around the aviation industry had increased uh, tremendously. Uh, certain policies that were put in place, uh, bilateral air service agreements, and then encouragement that government had done to other um, airlines to be able to fly in and out of Nigeria with certain ease, you know, leading towards a single African air transport market. These are some of the things that people don't see that we do that increases air traffic. Don't forget Nigeria was 200 million people, 450 billion uh, GDP at the center of Africa. It's a good candidate for air transportation, the links and the connections. And this is within the region, within the continent, and even in the world. Uh, locally here in Nigeria also, uh, perhaps some things that are quite unfortunate in the industry, I mean in the country, had helped the industry uh, or had increased the, 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 the rate at which people travel by air. Uh, this includes, of course, insecurity and so on and so forth. And then, of course, dilapidated uh, infrastructure, uh, which the government is trying hard to fix. For example, roads, a place that you suppose that you can reach in three hours, it takes you seven, eight hours to go. So you can do that in 20 minutes on, uh, in, uh, you know, in air transportation. So these are some of the things that have increased, um, uh, in my opinion, the, 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 the number of passengers that are traveling you know, around. But uh, fundamentally, those things that you included at the beginning of your question mm -hmm. uh, does mo most of the magic. Um, I saw... Um, the numbers, and I tried to compare the, in comparison, the uh, quarter one, quarter two of 2017 as against quarter one, quarter two of 2018. We saw a 33% increase in uh, domestic uh, passenger and our 13% in international uh, passenger. And this, if we move it forward, I'm sure it will double. Uh, and uh, air transportation by itself, by its nature, by its makeup, by the way it has been done uh, since the beginning of time, or since the beginning, since 1903, uh, after Wright Brothers, it always doubles every 15 years. Uh, in Africa, it does so. But uh, in Nigeria, due to the size of the economy and the market and the population, uh, it's expected to quadruple, you know, uh, very soon. And what has been stunting the growth and making it not to quadruple, to only double or triple in this case, is because of the capacity which we are trying to, to solve. Uh, you've seen us uh, doing all of these uh, terminal expansion and trying to concession the airports, uh, encouraging people to come. We've been traveling to, we've attracted the world to come to Nigeria. Example, we did the uh, International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, World Aviation Conference. The first time that that conference was held outside Canada and about 127 countries were there about attended and most of them at administrative level. Uh, so the whole world was here to discuss aviation infrastructure financing uh, here in Abuja. 
and we held that week uh, it passed. We also attracted the world to come for remotely piloted aircraft system symposium into Nigeria. We did quite a number of things to attract the world and uh, Nigeria became a host about five times to the world of aviation. The ACI Africa, I mean the ACI Africa, which is the Airport Council International also held their own um, uh, annual uh, convention here in Nigeria in Lagos. So uh, these things, you know, uh, opens up a uh, lot of opportunities and by itself also grow the industry. Now, uh, when you talk about increasing capacity, something that has been mentioned is the ability for people to transit using Nigeria. Uh, one of the things that appears to make Heathrow uh, the busiest of, of the airports is that it's a hub. Many of those who go to Heathrow are not going into the UK. They're just using it to go to other places. Uh, are there plans to make those kind of arrangements for transiting passengers to other places to use our own facilities, even if they are not visiting uh, Nigeria as a destination in that, uh, in that trip or in that instance? Well, that is a function of geography. And uh, we thank God for our own geography. He gave to us that Nigeria becomes, is at the center of Africa. Um, someone told me that the Western Central Africa is the belt of Africa. Then I said, well, then Nigeria is the buckle, you know, that, uh, that keeps it together. And uh, sitting right there, we are equidistant to all locations in Africa. And uh, literally, if you open the map, you see that Nigeria is literally at the center. So also is England. And that's why aviation development, if you look at it, from Central Americas uh, through to Central Europe to Central uh, Asia yeah. and Middle East, that's why all these activities are going on. That's why you have um, a Turkish or Turkey as a country uh, creating a hub in Santambu. And uh, that hub now, they are building a 150 mil million capacity airport because they started like us from 10 million, they expanded 25 million, 50, 75. All within the last two decades, they've arrived at 150 million. Dubai also an example. So our geography supports creation of hub and part of our policy is to create two hubs, perhaps one hub in Abuja, which will tender for the international flights that go far and wide, and also the natural hub in Lagos that tender for all of these West Coast and regional flights and so on. So it is our intention to create these hubs. And that's why we're trying to expand uh, these airports to be able to accommodate uh, these things that are coming. And that's why we're driving a very robust uh, roadmap. In Lagos, for example, the airport was built to cater for 200,000 people. Today, that airport is doing 8 million. So it's really chucked up. I've been having requests for, for, for airlines to come into Lagos, you know, but I don't have the capacity to take them. So what I do, I try to stagger them. I get some to go to Abuja, some to go to Kano, Port Harcourt, like that, and allow ET, for example, to be going to Inugu. This is all to decongest Lagos. Oh, is that what it is? Because yes. some of the operators of the, were yes. arguing that mm. You have given the foreign airlines multiple designations. Yes. Uh, 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 some of them are flying w routes that they as local airlines should benefit from. Uh, well, 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 well that, that's one part of the reason, okay. capacity. Second part is that uh, I am not a businessman. I am a policy maker. And my policy should be able to help develop, sustain businesses create new ones, support them to do their business on one side. On the other side, I am social democrat, by my party that is in government now, the APC, to be able also to look after the public, the citizens. Imagine somebody coming from my degree, Okano, or Inugu, or Akwaibom somewhere in Uyo. He, if you say he must go to Lagos, or he must come to Abuja to fly, what you are telling him is that he has to bear the local cost of transportation, local cost of hotel in Lagos or Abuja, uh, taxi, food, etc. These will add not less than, not less than, in my opinion, not less than about 100,000 to 150,000 on his ticket. And because he's a small trader, because his total, total worth is not more than $2,000, you know, and his ticket already is uh, nearing about uh, $800. If you add on top of his ticket, 150,000 Naira, is very significant. You are killing his profit. So as a policy maker, I ought to look after that guy 
whom I want his business to develop as much as I want the, the business of the local airlines to develop. So I have to strike a balance in between the two. So I allow them to go to Kano, I allow them to go to Port Harcourt, I allow them to go to Lagos and Abuja. Big deal. And still, still, the population of Nigeria, 200 million people, and 926,766 square kilometers of land mass with dilapidated infrastructure, especially roads, supports aviation, business, and air transportation in Nigeria. So the local airlines should not be lazy. They should get up and develop those routes. Before now, Nigeria Airways was having plane full, DC-10, Lagos, my degree. Nigeria Airways was going to Makodi. Nigeria Airways was going to Yola. Nigeria Airways was going to Sokoto. But these people want to do the triangle of Potako, Abuja, and Lagos. The easy way to make money. Today, we have airlines who have created routes. Example, overland. They created the Ilonin. They created uh, uh, Ibadan. They now have created uh, Akure. And now we are having two flights daily into Akure. And somebody else had suffered the initial shocks to open the route and keep faith and develop the confidence and trust by the passengers to go there. So uh, I think they, 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 they don't see it. They only see it from their own business. I should support them. Yes, I will support them. But I will support also the downtrodden people whose business is equally important to Nigerian people. And that's why. This, there are many, many reasons as to reason why you'd... And then again, also, uh, they have been calling for Yamasukuru decision. Yes. Yamasukuru the declaration. Open, the open, the open, open skies. skies. Nigeria was the, was the was at the forefront of calling for this uh, open skies in 1999. At the time, we had Nigeria Airways that had advantage that can reach everywhere in Africa. So they were at the forefront. And they stampeded everybody in Africa to, 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 to be convinced that this Yamasukuru is the only way, this open sky is the only way. And now we have single African air transport market, which says that the market is open. And since the market is open, everybody goes everywhere. So therefore, you cannot stop uh, um, an ET, Ethiopian airline, for example, from going everywhere. And much the same way that you cannot stop an airpiece from going everywhere. We stopped uh, Senegal last week, Senegalese airline, from coming to Nigeria. Reason? Because they stopped airpiece from going. And Arik. Mm -hmm. You get. So it, the, 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 the market is there. Our entrepreneurs in Nigeria should invest in aviation because the business is there. The rate of return is 34%, the highest in the world. But they will argue, but, but, I mean, those outside the industry who are listening to you as you're speaking now, would say that the mortality rate of the airlines is very high. Yes, because uh, so many have folded. That is also a function of capacity as well. And that is why in our roadmap, we are trying to develop that capacity. Aviation business, the complexity of aviation business, its science, art, and technology is very exact. And it's very delicate. And you need a full understanding of what the market is doing to be able to make money out of it. The margins are usually small. In Africa, it's a bit bigger. In Nigeria, it's much bigger. You mean so the mortality, profit. yes, the mortality is occasioned by uh, uh, um, lack of capacity. There was a Kabo, there was an Okada, there was a Kolkol, there was a Harka, there was a Hako, there was Albarka, name it. All of them were one-man business. There was even an Arik, owned by Sir jo Arik Johnson, if I get it right. Uh, it's one-man business who have no inkling or idea of an airline business. He becomes the alter ego. He decides what happened. He is also the, um, the uh, apost holder in the business. And he doesn't have an idea. So he runs it the way he wants to run it. If he multiplies 127 passengers times 27,000 to Kano equals this, he feels he's happy. The money rolls in every day into his account and he gets alert, bagam, 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 bagam and he shows big numbers, and he thinks it's a good business. Not understanding the complexity and how best and how most efficient it can be. I'll give you one example. Most Nigerian airlines that I see today, most of them, except in Arik in those days, and perhaps maybe Aero, most of them, they will go and get an airplane. They're so old, they will bring this airplane into Nigeria. They will fly it. In their own thinking, they're making money. 
By the time they go for maintenance, they can't pay. They can't pay. And they drop it and pick another one. And the rate of uh, maintenance becomes much higher because innovation is either by calendar or by time, usage. Whichever comes first in most of the items. And these items, they, because they don't have knowledge, their maintenance cost is high. If you bring a 15-year-old airplane now, and I bring a new airplane, the, the engineering of the new airplane will save me 20% of your cost in fuel. You'll be burning 40% of your income. I'll be burning maybe perhaps 17% of my income. Right there, I have 23% uh, uh, savings. Yes. yes. So the understanding of this aviation business, the fact that it's not, like one minister used to say, it's not car hire business, but the, the, the fact that you need to have knowledge. In fact, being a pilot or being an engineer does not necessarily mean that you are the best aviation manager. It's another ball game also. It helps you a lot because you understand the dynamics much faster, much better. But people ought to invest in human capital. So a lack of capacity. That's why in our roadmap, we've decided and Mr. President approved that we create a university that will go one into research and development. That will also do second thing to develop the manpower that we need to run our aviation industry. So for me, for me, I think it's lack of capacity. That's why there's higher rate of mortality. Um, another one that the, the industry is um, uh, trying to solve, what, what we are doing, part of our roadmap, is to allow for access to cheap funds in single digits. And that's why in our roadmap we have the ALC, the Aviation Leasing Company, that we're trying to put together, which have gone in very advanced stage. That uh, Aviation Leasing Company will allow access for aviators, for people in the aviation business. Is it car hire? Is it uh, ground handling? Is it uh, maintenance? Is it the, the running of the airline itself? Buying planes, everything. You know, you assess cheap funds that you can get at single digits. And so lack of funds, lack of capacity. What is the current government policy on aircraft? Because I remember between 2005 and about 2007 and eight, we had a number of high profile crashes. And then the policy about the age of aircraft you could bring in for operations was cut. Is that still the situation as it is today? Or have you perhaps fine-tuned it? If you have new airplane, you make more savings, you make more earnings, you spend less. So if that is the case, uh, I would like to see airlines having um, average fleet age of maybe seven years, five years, then they can compete. If you open the skies, Ethiopian Airlines is receiving one aircraft delivery every month. At some point, their average fleet age will be seven years. If you in Nigeria, you are, uh, you are an Airpiece, you are an Asman, you are a Max Air, you are, and then your average fleet age is 19 years old, you're burning uh, twice the amount of gasoline that I am burning, and gasoline being 40% of my operations. Right there, I'm beating your hands now. So you cannot, so I can bring down my prices and you cannot afford to do so. So you get out of business. So the thing is, for people to be in this business, they need to understand it. And for them to operate a newer machine means more money for them, means easier maintenance, the rate of maintenance reduces, and so on and so forth. So, so I, I think uh, the policy is good and we're continuing with it. But it's just that to tell people or to make them understand that the fact that a new airplane on its way to delivery can have an accident. Things can go wrong, uh, like we've seen in the 737 Max uh, crash. Yes, in, uh, yeah. So things can go wrong with new airplanes. So it's not the age, actually, it's the maintenance. But then perhaps where the age comes in is because the machine becomes more expensive, more difficult to operate. Now, where we are today, um, you, earlier on in, in the conversation, you talked about the bilateral air services agreements. Uh, from the little information that we get, that is enhanced if you have a national carrier. Absolutely. Uh, and you have been an advocate of a national carrier. Yes. Uh, there are quite a number of people who were up in arms against that, mm -hmm. especially some of those who have invested in the uh, local market. Yes. They say you're bringing in an, another competitor who will now have government 
backing it against mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. who are barely surviving. Mm -hmm. What's the situation today? Well, the situation is that we are on course on the national carrier. It will be established, and it will be established very well in such a way that it will not fail after start, because there has been failed attempts of this carrier. We have been very diligent about it. Uh, we believe that it will support our economy. The purpose and function of government is to provide service or at least build the culture and the, the environment that would provide uh, um, enabling environment for entrepreneurs to excel. Now, for, for people who complain that there is competition, this is all about market. Now, they're not just complaining about competition, Hello? Minister. They are saying that it will have your back. It will have your backing as the federal government. I am more than willing also to back them up. And why can't they also invest in the venture? Do you think the fragmentation, the way this island are constituted, they lack capacity, lack finance? Okay, a three airplane uh, airline, which we have now today, you think it will compete against the 150 airplane uh, Ethiopian? Or do you think it will compete against the Emirates 250 aircraft? Or do you think it will compete against 300 aircraft uh, um, um, airline somewhere? Or even British Airways with 240 airplanes? They cannot. An individual simply does not have. These are three airplane, five airplane airlines. And those like um, airpiece who have 20, 25 airplanes or even 30, uh, what the kind of airplane do they have? I don't want to go to television with some of the things that are wrong about, about them. But I said it in the stakeholder uh, conference, which channels was there, and they covered throughout, and I told them what the problem is. They have a huge, big-time problem, which we are willing to solve and resolve. Government should uh, help this for two reasons. Actually, three reasons. Reason number one, you cannot deny the fact that aviation is a catalyst for growth and development. It changes on the economy. It connects markets and places and nations and tradition, history, culture, everything. Without tourism, for example, without aviation, tourism is zero. Because 80% of tourists arrive their destination by air. You can't go to Mauritius by road. By the time you start going there and come back, the whole day is over. So aviation is very, very important and very, very key to the economy. So this one reason, government decides to face aviation squarely to improve the infrastructure and establish this career. Two, it only helps enhance the economy, economic activity. Imagine, I keep telling people, and I, I've said this time and again, like a broken uh, oh, uh, record, that Dangote hires perhaps 100,000 people, whatever, or even 2 million, I don't know his number of staff. If he travels from Lagos to Abuja, it's not Aliko that is traveling. It is those 100,000 people he's employing that are traveling. Okay, if he doesn't travel, he will not pay their wages. So today, you came from Lagos. It would have been grossly impossible for you to come and meet this interview today and go back today if you do not come by air. Sure. So, the, so the, the silent contribution of aviation to economic growth and development, to ease of doing business, to the economy, must be underscored and must be understood. So government understood that, and that's why government is trying to face aviation squarely. The national carrier will only enhance it. We have 200 million people living in a land of 900, like I said, 923,766 square kilometers of land with dilapidated uh, infrastructure, especially roads. The only way is to connect by air. And in fact, even if you have well-established road and rail, you get there faster. Are more efficient so you can transact business and go back we've been Lagosians, all of us we come to Lego, uh, abuja you know right after lunch we say no my flight <laughs> sometimes you're about to pick your check in the minister of finance and you just tell them no 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 my flight i have to go back to lagos as if there's something there in lagos another check for you to pick in lagos <laughs> <laughs> so so really aviation does this and much more it connects families and friends for example and the only you can have a one-week window, you run by air and go and come back. So I, I believe that the national carrier is important. Another thing is that people tell me, and it's true, a ticket from Accra to London, which is further distance 
than Abuja to London. The ticket is in Abuja, London. It's almost twice the ticket in Accra, London. It was going to be one of my questions. Can yeah. you explain that? Why? Um, when I was in House of Reps, as Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Aviation, and also as the Chairman investigated one of the panels there, I, I summoned a British Airways guy and asked him, why is it so? He said, because Nigerians can afford. That's all? Yes, and I found it very rude, but it's true. It Nigerians is true. can afford? Yes, because he's a businessman. He thinks that uh, if I sell this shirt for you, this red tie you're wearing, if I sell it for $200, you'll buy it. Why would I want to sell it for 50 See? And that's the strength of the economy of Nigeria. Look, Ghana, uh, we went to a conference, and then Ghana was, I mean, I saw it on Twitter and on all the social media, they were saying, ah, look, come on, Ghana, look at the airport, Ghana has arrived, and all of that. Ghana has arrived, respectively, yes. But the number of passengers per annum for Ghana had never crossed 500,000. The, the best one they did, I think, in 2017 was 450,000, even with the new infrastructure and everything. Before we completed some of our airports with dilapidated infrastructure, Nigeria was doing 16 million passengers. That is 30 times Ghana as a market. And if you, if you go in the evening to Lagos and Abuja, and you see the rate of uh, uh, travels, international travels. You know, Passenger you, traffic? Yes. Easily you have 10 planes of 200, 300 people packed full flying out. Nigeria is the only economy. And right there at the center. So we are in the right market. We have the market, the population. So I believe the solution to this is having a national carrier. What will be Which will structure? bring down... No, no. What will be its structure? Wait, wait, wait. I will come to the structure of the okay. national carrier. Is in having the national carrier. And once you have that, and you have your own, and you get it right. This time? Yeah. And then the prices will come down. Prices will come down. The structure I've said before, time and again, and you can access it. Uh, one, it will be private, private sector led and driven. It will have some sovereign shoulder to lean on, certainly. And government also will participate. And that's, what, that's why it is a PPP. And government will participate maybe perhaps about 5% or less. And this is my own uh, thinking. thinking. And uh, I don't want to preempt the full business case, which I will be receiving in about a week. Oh, no, sorry, the outline business case which I'll receive in about a week. You know what it will state. But that is what the numbers we're looking at. And everything is showing that it is going to be the best airline that will be in this continent of Africa. We will take advantage of our position to access this 1.1 billion people in this black continent. With single African air transport market in, in place, with a very strong carrier in Nigeria. The so day, would you, the day, the day you, is ours. Are you so, going so to say... The, so no, I'm sorry. I just no, want I'm to sorry, ask I'm sorry, too. So okay. the entrepreneurs, <laughs> the entrepreneurs in this aviation business, those entrepreneurs in this aviation business, I would recommend, I would suggest, and I also ask them to consider investing in this national career. Now, in, in that kind of situation, they would be competing with it, but they would also be investors in it. That's, that's what you emphasize. They, 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 can, you they can, but if I, if, if I am to own a three airplane or five airplane company called Hardy Air Limited, soon as you establish this national carrier, I will liquidate either in cash or in kind and invest in this carrier. The banks have done it and they become much stronger. It's all about ego thing. He's the chairman, the alter ego, the accountable manager for the airline. He's a post holder. He decides what happened. He gives his friend a free ticket. Look, without naming names, I once went to apply for a job in one of these airlines. And I saw the alter ego of the airline at that time, asking for the sales of Lagos for that day. And they brought it, and he was giving it to press singers. You and mean the actual cash? Yes, and I said, there, there goes my salary. And I refused the job. I did. So, so... So aviation business should not be should be looked at from perspective of business. We as government, when we intend to partner, we want to serve our people to be served better. These airlines, as they are, are they the best airlines that Nigeria deserves? Our capacity, our ability, 
our economy, our size, our sheer location? Is this what Nigeria deserves? No. We deserve a much, much, much better Helen. And you must start somewhere. And these people, year in, year out, you have said it before, they get in there and they get out. They get into the business and they get out. Yes. But with diligence, with capacity, Qatar Airways started with two airplanes, 737s. And today they have long gone beyond the 100 uh, airplane uh, mark. They are there at about 170 airplane mark. All new, with a brand new airport in Doha. Uh, Emirates started with two aircraft. Today they are in the 250 aircraft uh, mark. And all of the new. If you think, if you want to think aviation, think about UAE. Think about Dubai. Remove the airline Emirates. Remove the airport. Remove them. Once you remove them, what is Dubai? Well, um, let, let me ask you this. The, 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 examples, you so, so, gave, yeah. no, the examples you gave, uh, so Emirates, so, so, Emirates, Qatari, so, 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 and so on, yes. they're all heavily state-backed on their own as businesses starting up. They couldn't have afforded brand new aircraft at that time. No, 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 no. Uh, you got it wrong. Because, Correct me. No, no, no. Because Qatar was started by an individual. It may have been started by an individual. Yes, and raised to the hundred, uh, raised to to a very high level before the state now bought it from him. Yes, but this, uh, I mean, the place no, of no, growth. Because because that's their structure, that is their monarchical structure. Right. We here are operating a free market economy, and the government in power today is a social democrat to serve the people. So nothing wrong that with us uh, investing in this. Uh, in this no, thing. I'm not saying there's nothing service. wrong. And 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 also. The sovereign shoulder I'm talking about is to be able to allow the airline to become strong, to be able to provide the service, and to get to where these uh, Qataris are, or more. Yeah, because you say we're going to yeah, be competing because, with them. Yeah, well, yes, but if you have a, a bigger, better airline, then we'll be better than them. We are located in a much, much better environment. It's all about travel, propensity to fly. The Nigerian uh, um, 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 economy is booming, 450 billion official GDP, unofficial a trillion dollar GDP, you can't ignore that. At the center of Africa, 1.2 billion people, what else do you need? Highly traveling people, highly mobile Nigerians, they travel for nothing, really. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> because one of my questions was going to be, why do you think Nigerians are such highly traveled people? I think it's our nature. It's our nature, it's our style. Because you are right, when you go to any of the major yeah. international airports, morning, afternoon, evening, uh, regardless of what they say are the economic uh, difficulties, <laughs> the places are full. Yes. And people See, are headed for when we, when, when, when we were in school, you know, back in time, we were receiving government birthday allowance and uh, scholarships, and they called them Bulgaria at that time, because many people were going to Bulgaria country to go and study, so the amount of money you get is called, is, gets is Bulgaria, or Volga as they call it. Um, you know, in quotation. And that money was, I think, uh, 710 Naira. Soon as we received that 710 Naira, most of us will buy a ticket to London, 210 Naira student rebate, because the ticket is just 300 and something Naira to London. And there was no visa. You know, visa started during the Babangeli regime. Mm -hmm. So there was no visa. You 710 Naira in your pocket. You, Naira, Naira was exchangeable on the streets of London. You just go buy your British Caledonia, whatever airline you want to go, or KLM. You land in London, you change your era, you hit, hit the road, enter town, party around, and come back. So, so, so if people can take their means of livelihood as a student to buy a ticket to go to London, and that time they call you all sorts of names, Bintu, Bimbo, all of these names, you know, uh, they, you start to answer them, acquire them, and you feel high about it, like you get a bit tipsy, you know, when they call you Bintu. <laughs> But, uh, Honorable Minister, now, um, in terms of the actual infrastructure on ground that will support the national carrier, yes. the other local carriers you mentioned, and all these other, um, one of the things that uh, also has been pointed out is that you talked about four or five of the big airports, and the government has invested quite a bit in that. In Lagos, there's this new terminal that has been built right next to the existing terminal. Uh, and then, of course, there are others in Abuja, Port Harcourt, Kano. But that still leaves about 17, 18 airports. Some of them in use, actually. I mean, 
significant use. You mentioned that Korea earlier on in the interview. But they can't use them at night because they don't have uh, night uh, uh, equipment, equipment that aid pilots to land at night. So after six, many of those airports are off limits to uh, aircraft. Now, that brings me to the issue of support equipment at airports. What are you doing about that? I'll answer you this question, and then I'll also discuss a little bit on the roadmap so okay. that we don't keep going back to the same question. OK. Um, what are we doing? We're taking airport by airport and improving them. But the reason, most of the, some of the reasons why the airports are closed after sex has nothing to do with the, the night landing capability of that airport. I give you the motors air, airport, in, okay, one of the motors in, in the country, say, for example, Casina. You can land at night. But after sex, who goes to Casina? If you ask me to open it at night, you're telling me to put air traffic controllers there, to put engineers there, to put uh, marshalers there, to put fire, firemen there, to put all these people in the full number that is required to run the airport. And I'll have to pay them their wages. This is one of the reasons. But if it is 6 o'clock, I will put skeletal just for emergency purposes. I'll put a guy on the control tower, you know, unshaped, one or two. I'll put uh, one or two people uh, stand by in the fire service and so on. So I'll cut my cost. Because operating every single hour of an airport is huge. So, and nobody goes to these airports. But if you, quite often, if you want to go to an airport, you call them up and they charge you. They charge you for staying after six so they can put on all the lighting system and so, so on. So it's honestly not uh, It's equipment. not an equipment issue? No, 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 it's not, no, it's not. There's also... 90% is not equipment or okay. 70%, you know, it's not equipment. It's also that. But we are gradually transforming all of that. I think if God will borrow us more time from now to 2023, um, we should be able to have all of our airports to international standard in accordance with best practices and in accordance with the standards and recommended practices of ICAO. Our roadmap, very briefly, Please. when we came in, we talked about lack of capacity. We are addressing it towards this just approved university by Mr. President, which is in partnership with ICAO and some other agencies and countries, uh, participating countries and other universities. And that will uh, look after and that manpower requirement at that level of research and development and high level managerial uh, thing. In Zaria, we have improved Zaria. It's now the regional training center of excellence. As a matter of fact, in the whole world, Zaria received certification, received approval, received a certificate from ICAO as the institution that has the highest number of trained instructors and also has the highest number of ICAO courses offered in one single institution. place, institution, yeah. and that is Zaria. And we did it. We've now bought 5.2 billion Nara uh, firefighting simulator and put in Zaria. It's being installed right now. We'll be commissioned in, the, in about a month. Before we used to go to Kamaru to do it. We're putting in simulators there, flight simulators, etc. So we're improving that also, so that uh, our pilots, engineers, and, 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 and so on, you know, will produce more for the industry. So one of the roadmap is to attack human capital development to be able to have uh, the right kind of people to run airlines and run the aviation industry. That is one. Second, the national carrier. To serve our economy, to serve our population, to serve our traveling public. The middle, middle class in Nigeria is growing, which used to be absent, but now it's growing. And their capacity to spend is increasing. All, of these, all these numbers are World Bank numbers. And, and we need to serve them. And propensity to fly has increased tremendously. In fact, it has quadrupled from 2015. So we need to serve them with that carrier. But the carrier cannot stay alone without having where to go and maintain the airplanes. So we thought that we would put a maintenance, repair, and overhaul center. Where all of these airplanes, including those in the carrier, and those that are owned by private people, and all of the ARIGs and the ASMANs and the APCs will come. Rather than you fly your aircraft to US or UK to go and maintain it and bring it back and spend $250,000, you know, you do it here in Nigeria then we're under taxes, government in, uh, under taxes. So uh, tied with that also, we thought that there should be an aviation leasing company. 
where you can access chief funds to do aviation business, including the MRO, including the airline, including the handling company, and so on and so forth. And with that also, we thought that, um, example, Edo State, which are aggressively uh, um, pursuing export of perishable items and so on, right. we will create we will create in that uh, um, airport uh, an export uh, uh, cargo uh, dedicated for both perishable and hard cargo out of the country. And it's in seven locations. It will be in Bini, it will be in Katsina, it will be in Brinikebi, it will be in Jos, in Yola, in um, um, Lagos. No, no, sorry. Um, um, Ekiti. And uh, one other place. So it will be seven of them. And they will be robust, big enough to be able to export these things. We, 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 I mentioned um, uh, Kebi State and uh, Edo State simply because of the resolve of those state governments you know, to, to participate, to pursue that. So it's part of the roadmap as well. Then, of course, uh, I talked about the, um, the cargo airports. I talked about the maintenance, repair, and overhaul. I talked about the airline. I talked about the university. Um, and uh, in the um, roadmap, there will be the search and rescue. Uh, and then the concession of the airports. Because we do believe that these airports will be better run and managed by the private sector. But that's already generating controversy. I don't know why. Well, Maybe you could enlighten that else on that. Because it seems as if, particularly the unions, the air, the air transport unions, seem not either to understand what it is that you mean. No, I think, they, I, I, I think they do understand. You know, when we came in, there's usually anywhere in the world where you want to do concession. There's usually some resist, resistance. They ask questions, what are you concessioning? The entire airport, including the runway, the facility, the terminal building, and so on and so forth. We did explain to them that we have the business case being done, but our own thinking as government is to concession the terminal buildings to make them better so that you have the, you have the um, 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 satisfaction as a passenger. I tell you, in aviation, or as a policy maker, I am more concerned, I'm more concerned about how very safe you depart point A and land point B and everything in between. It's more important for me, and that's what I pursue. And 80%, in fact, 90% of the time, that's where I spend my energy and my resources to ensure that the passenger leaves, departs point A and lands point B safely and securely. It is very important to have a conveyor belt, very important to have toilets, very important to have air conditioning. But A, if you don't land safely to their location, you won't use them. True. And if you land without them, you can use Agbero, for example, to carry your luggage. <laughs> but you are safe. So, so, so it's not degrading those things, but it's saying that there are much more fundamental things that we are looking after that the passenger don't see. Example, after the sosolicit crash, which has now been found to be the causative factor was wind shear. Wind shear means the shearing away or the tearing away of the wind which the plane rides up a wind, just like a boat in the water, you know, or a car on a road. Yes. Suddenly, if the, if the road will suddenly open up, the car will just drop down. True. So if the, if the sudden change of direction and speed of the air is called wind shear in aviation, it will suddenly change the direction and literally tear apart. One layer turns this way, the other one turns this way, and they go like this. And with speed, it's called wind shear because we didn't have an equipment to tell us when there's going to be wind shear. So when we came, what we did, we ensured that most of our airports now are equipped with wind shear equipment. The passenger doesn't know we've done that, and it's a tremendous amount of money, sir. And these are the kind of things that we're doing to fix the industry, to ensure we're safe and secure first, before all of these niceties. And even in the nice, comfortable environment, we're not lagging behind. We're doing all the airports. We've finished Port Harcourt, we've finished Abuja, We'll finish Kano, which is going to be commissioned soon. We'll finish Lagos in this 2020. We'll, we'll deliver Enugu. Incidentally, I was going to ask you we, about we, we are, we are, we are, What's we, the situation we've, with Enugu? We've closed, we've, closed down, we've closed down Abuja for 16 weeks. Yes, while people move. To tender, yeah, to tender to safety concerns. And now we've closed Enugu. Enugu will deliver, God willing, before Easter. Finally, Honorable Minister, I'm staying in Lagos. Many people notice, and I said, when I have you, I will ask. The situation where when passengers arrive, 
they've got to go through this cordon all the way to a pickup point. And for those who probably are being picked up by uh, members of the family or relatives, not non-commercial vehicles, probably go, have to go even further to the multi-layered car park or indeed uh, the general car park. Is there something going to be done to make it more comfortable? Yes. By the time we finish the, the new airport and we link the new terminal building with the old one, it will tremendously reduce. But you see, the funny thing is, it is because it's happening in Nigeria. I'm not making an excuse, and I'm not saying that we should not be do something on purpose to, make, to ease the, 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 or to make people more comfortable and to ease their journey. No, that is our purpose, and that's what we want to achieve. That's why I say when we finish, it will be better. But imagine you're going to be dropped off in uh, Heathrow, Terminal 1-2. You know the amount of trekking that you'll trek before you get your gates, eh? True. Uh -huh. So in London, they don't complain because they believe that this is London. Hey, you know, I can't, I can't complain. This is London. I cannot throw my chewing gum anywhere. I have to find the dustbin and put it there. But in, in Lagos, I'll chew it and throw it away. Who cares? Uh, the attitude has to change. Attitude has changed. The Buhari first coming, he had to teach us how to queue up and because then he was a military man, we were very afraid they did queued up. I remember uh, chewing gum and wanted to throw the wrap in Kaduna. I was driving to Kano. Believe it or not, I found that same wrap in my hands in Kano. I drove all the way from Kaduna to Kano with that wrap in my hands. So people should also please endure. They should bear with us while we're trying to solve the situation. Okay? And also change their attitudes. So when you come to pick up somebody, Please, since now there are phones, call him up when you're out. So he come and pick you up and go away. Don't pack there, uh, smoking a cigarette and doing whatever you want to do and creating a venturi. If you, create, if you create a venturi, you reduce, you narrow the, the, the passage yes. and you build up pressure. If you go to Lagos and see the traffic. tremendous amount. Oh, the amount of traffic. It's indeed. appalling. It's appalling. So if you are dropping off, be sure that you put your luggage from home where as soon as you come, you just take it, boop, go out. In a matter of um, 30 seconds to one minute, you would have picked your bag out of the car and say bye-bye. Don't put them anyhow and then you try to unpack them right there at the car park and pick them out and then go to give your mommy a hug, go to give your girlfriend a hug and say bye-bye and all of that. It's attitudinal. Do we need to now put police? When I came in, you know, the first time, we did put a tax force there and the situation improved. But they were harassing people. But it improved. So do I have to put somebody with a cane to be saying, you know, no, I, can't, I cannot do that. But we have to also change as, as, as a nation. If we want those nice things, we should also be nice. Honorable Minister. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank sir. You thank much. you. I appreciate thank it. You. Sir. Appreciate it. That's today's episode of This Night. Do let us know what you think of the conversation. The handles are right there on your screen. I'm Ladi Akredo Loale. Thanks for joining us and goodbye.